I'm just making these off the top of my head now. That was a public service announcement saying that uh, we all had to stay indoors between two and three o'clock tomorrow because that we're doing a drill in the to prepare, prepare us for what happens if uh, mainland China attacks Taiwan. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. I couldn't understand a word of it. It might not have even been entirely in. Uh, Friends, I think friends don't use. Um, okay, so the thing is, is like I can't really tell. I can't understand something that I can't hear. Like, if you can't distinguish between one syllable and another, you're not going to understand. Shut up. It's like the Muslim call to, to prayer, isn't it? I don't know, this, I don't know, this makes me think about, um, the guy who died in the, uh, in Afghanistan. Remember all the refugees poured into the, uh, airport there and, uh, were trying to get on the plane? And this one poor guy, God, that was amazing. He was so desperate that he grabbed onto the side of the plane and, uh, the plane took off and he fell off. Oh my God. I can't really imagine a more exciting way to die, can you? <laughs> I mean, this that guy was due a Darwin Award. He was so desperate that he thought he would pull a Mission Impossible, grab onto the side of the plane, rush, this is the way I want to die. <clears throat> I'll take it. I gotta die some way. Yeah, grab onto the side of a military jet, fly off until you can't hang on anymore, and then fall like the whole the, the whole thing couldn't have taken a, more than a couple more minutes. Can you imagine anything more exciting? I can't. <clears throat> uh, the the bullshit about that story and both the right wing and the left wing are doing this. Um, what they're doing is they're uh, saying, "Look at this tragedy that Biden caused." <clears throat> well, yeah, I guess he did. Um, but uh, the bullshit is that they were only there because they were afraid of the Taliban. If, if you had opened up that airport and said, like, look, all you have to do is rush the plane and we're going to let a bunch of you in, it wouldn't have fucking mattered if the Taliban was coming in or not. That place is such a shithole. That airport would have been flooded and they would have tried to get on those planes. Maybe... Uh... Like you don't want to be an expert on everything, but what you really want to do is, you know, just think a little bit for yourself, right? If you had opened up that airport and said, okay, just rush in and say you got some connection to Canada or whatever, just rush in, try to get on a plane, how many people would have showed up and tried to do that? No fear of the Taliban. 20% more people, 30% more energy maybe. That would have happened anyway. Um, good old Norm. Norm, I, what you love about Norm is, is that he had unusual answers to questions, right? Do you like sex? No, I think it's disgusting. Uh, there's only so many ways to do it, and it always ends the same way. Like, who says that? Um, 
But somebody asked them, so is there a line in comedy? And so many com comedians will say, no, there's no line. The whole point of comedy is to push the boundary, right? Push the boundary. That, that's all it's about. And he said, like, are you crazy? Uh, for me, the line is that I don't want to tell a joke that is really going to hurt somebody. And the experience that he had is reporting on a particularly uh, horrible car accident. And I think that he was uh, in the same city, maybe, and he had heard about it. Shit. Battery coming out. I'm going to move this whole show outside so you don't have to look at me all the time. Um, but what, yeah, he said that he did make a really horrible joke and the, the family contacted him. And they said, um, geez, can you imagine, like, remember the accident just a week ago? Can you imagine how that made us feel? No, just kidding. We're not part of the family at all. No, that's not actually what happened. That happened to him. That's not a joke, right? Uh, and so if you take a joke like, uh, this guy should win the Darwin Award, right? Uh, like, that wasn't the brightest thing to do, was it? Um, or to say, you know, make a joke about it. You know, it's a bit different. Uh, it'd be exciting. Uh, and it didn't take that long. You know, what's the big deal? <laughs> Actually. Okay, so, like, I wouldn't say that if I thought that there was any chance that some idiot who watched this video would uh, give it to his family. Uh, so, you know, the onus is on the viewer. If you're so stupid that you would send this video to the family of that kid, well, uh, you did it, right? Reminds me of another story. Oh yeah, I was thinking, uh, this whole thing about uh, the way that there's competing narratives going on in society all the time. Uh, there's no limit to uh, how fascinating this will be. This, there'll be no limit to the amount of material that will come in. Uh, I don't know how, I, I never put it this way exactly before, but like it, because it's all about stories that you can create. Of course this is infinite. It would be infinite if the stories they told were true. But since the stories that they tell are half the truth, three quarters of the truth, the tr truth bent inside out or turned upside down, uh, there's no absolutely no limit to this. This will never stop. Absolutely this will never stop. Um, so that's nice. Maybe I can do one of these every day until I get become 70 and get my extra $40 a month in uh, old age security benefits. <clears throat> Which brings us to uh, what I really wanted to talk about when I started this. Apparently Cesar Chavez or whatever, Trudeau uh, hired a really mouthy, bold uh, black woman. Just fit, it's a butcher's dog, right? Uh, to be something or other. And then she quit the cabinet, and when he quit, he said, you know, you wouldn't be here if I, you, you owe me loyalty, and you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. And of course she said, what do you mean, because I'm a black woman? Is that why I wouldn't be here? And he said, no, you just wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. Like, you should show a little loyalty. And of course she was, you know, it's because I'm black, isn't it? Because I'm a woman. Black woman could never do it without the help of a white man, could, could she? <laughs> uh, she's good at it. She's brilliant. Uh, she's kind of funny. Um, but apparently what she's doing is she's leading a class action racial discrimination lawsuit against the uh, Canadian government. So I'm pretty certain that a uh, class action lawsuit uh, would only be from people who were employed by the federal government and didn't feel that they had received the, um, 
what do you call it? Uh, they didn't advance as quickly in their career as they think they deserve to. And it's a class action lawsuit, and so they're all going to get paid like a, a great big chunk of money. Uh, so a number of things come to mind if if I see that. Okay, and the first of them is like you you really uh, timed it well, didn't you? Colored employees of the federal government, uh, so it would be you know go through the list. It'd be colored people, women, uh, female colored people, uh, cisgendered, uh, gay. Uh, what you know? What else would it be? Handicapped people. I bet. I bet that's real. Or it might be real. I don't know. I I don't think that. Um, okay, in the first place, the government has a policy of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So if you really wanted to drill down on it, you could probably make the argument that a lot of those people weren't uh, qualified for the jobs they got in the first place. Not if they've been hired in the last 10 years. I, I think, you know, there's in some ways uh, discrimination very real because they can put the same qualifications just to put a black name or a white name and they get a certain number of calls back. So there's a certain amount of racial discrimination on that level. I think that uh, study proved it. Um, but the problem is that they didn't, uh, they didn't take into consideration to talk about at all why people would be discriminatory. Uh, if I was a struggling business owner, I'd be reluctant to hire a black female because there's a 50 times better chance she's going to sue me. You know, I've got uh, employees, I've got to pay for my kids' education or whatever. Just literally, I would be afraid of that, and so would you, if it was your money. You know what? I know. Okay, the thing is, is that there was a university professor even, it wasn't even her money. And she said she discriminated against black people for exactly the same reason. And she wouldn't have gotten, she was a black woman, and she wouldn't have gotten sued herself to just the university. There's just too much hassle. They're always suing you for one thing or another. Why wouldn't they? You don't hardly even blame them. Okay, so they've got a kids to raise or whatever. They see there's a source of income. Wouldn't it be sort of irresponsible for them not to uh, derive this income that would help their kids' lives? Uh, okay, but um, so there's the class action lawsuit coming out. It's just why can, can we have somebody just you know say straight out? Bernier or, or O'Toole, look, you picked a bad time. We're seriously in debt right now. Uh, I'm assuming that if you've got a government job, you've got a pretty decent deal. You've got a good pension, medical, dental, not a bad wage, all of that stuff. Maybe you didn't make it quite as high as you think you should have. Maybe it was because you were racially discriminated against. Maybe it wasn't, but you took, you picked a bad time. You definitely picked a very bad time when so many people aren't getting any money from the government, that's for sure. So 20,000 businesses uh, were closed, 30,000 businesses in the last year. No, you picked a bad time. Uh, and uh, just as a practical thing, this doesn't make any difference because I don't know what I'm talking about anyway, but I just like them say, okay, look, we're gonna to have to pay you. How much is it? Uh, we're gonna we'll make you an offer, uh, and we're gonna protect the interests of the Canadian people. Okay, we're not just focused on you, right? Trudeau's already said, yeah, of course we're gonna pay it out. Probably, I think. Um, maybe he didn't say it. I just assume that he'd say that. Uh, yeah, and if you want more, we'll take we'll fight you, and we're just gonna hammer it out. We're trying to protect the Canadian taxpayer. That's it.